You'll never see me coming. Before it's too late, everything's exfiltrated. The ransomware's deployed. I click on a button, I can deploy a rat to take over your system. Your credentials are now mine. I poisoned your industrial control system. The power's cut off. The city has no more electricity. It's too late now. And cut! You know, I don't know, it feels pretty lame. Let's just go get a coffee, I reckon. That sounds good. Yeah, let's yeah. do You may be able to change the spin rate of a nuclear centrifuge. You may be able to uh, create a denial of service attack where we pause functionality, we pause, you know, the capability of, for example, a factory producing something, which costs a lot of money. The thing about cybersecurity is that it affects all organizations. There's a lot of organizations that may not have the funding, you know, they're non-for-profit or security is last compared to the safety and accessibility of their software and stuff. Cyber hacking, for example, they can break in from an external environment, they can walk by, connect to the internet, or they can just tailgate someone, an employee walking through, then be able to connect straight to the OT. This affects pretty much, you know, any organization, they have to be aware of both their physical security as well as their technical security. An engineer who's working on dam, they require multiple sensors to tell, okay, the water's at this level. Well, a cyber attack may be able to make these sensors uh, rendered useless or return false data. So this is why penetration testing is really important because we're able to assess, okay, these sensors actually have a vulnerability that's present. The way that they run and, and execute may lead to being able to take over, for example, these sensors or be able to relay back information. Let's pretend we're testing an application and there's a certain vulnerability here. We know that it's vulnerable, but we want to see to what extent and what can all attackers do. What a team would usually do is, and you explain, okay, I can do route A. This will lead to this attack vector. So this pathway that may compromise X, Y, Z. And then employee B, for example, they may come from a different perspective and say, okay, I've seen this in the past. However, I've seen threat actor B use, you know, manipulate this in, past um, cyber attack and be able to do something else. So we get that creative mindset here and that brainstorming and all of a sudden we don't just have that one answer. Now we have seven different routes and a much different severity from that critical finding. In 2010 Stuxnet, which was a massive cyber attack, pretty much one of the first discovered OT attacks that impacted Iran's nuclear capability. So from this, what happened was there was a really, really sophisticated malware that was developed they put them on usbs and they dropped them around around the area the target and the employees they picked them up plugged it in and that malware it knew okay stay dormant until we hit the correct controller it recorded all the data and then when it was ready to attack it you know relayed it back and it started changing the spin rates of the centrifuges as a penetration tester would first attempt to brute force so you know entering credentials or check leaks for it but secondly, if, if there's no authentication, we can just go straight to it and start dumping that sensor information. And you'd be quite surprised. This happens quite a lot. Their remote management interface is accessible. Their VPN interface, so their ability to log into their internal internet is just accessible. So say for example, as a penetration tester, we can get leaked credentials, enter it in, download the VPN packet. So method of accessing the internal network then get into the jump box and then it becomes an internal penetration test. You can just exfiltrate all the data and they would never know, or they've never actually tested. Okay, do our alerts work? What we see now is IoT being abused for surveillance purposes. So people are buying IoT devices from all sorts of countries. They don't understand what it's actually doing and they're able to monitor, for example, they can tap into your camera, watch you at all times, or they can, um, children's devices, there's been some reports on in the past where they're recording audio recordings of, for example, a, a little dollar was, and it's sending it to servers. This is now becoming a trend in cybersecurity where IoT has to be looked at and exactly to what extent it's going to impact everyone. Because now everyone's got IoT in the house and they don't realize, you know, that smart Hoover, that smart vacuum cleaner going around, it's, it's mapping out your house. Where is that being sent to? The address, the details, the GPS tracking. But that's why it's really important to do OT testing so we can find those vulnerabilities for you and we can ensure that these things don't happen.